What is the difference between perlite concrete and vermiculite concrete? Or is there a difference at all? <laughs> perlite concrete and vermiculite concrete both are lightweight concretes. Each are a lightweight aggregate. And when you make any sort of concrete or mortar with a lightweight aggregate, what you're going to end up with is something that's quite a bit different than a regular concrete or mortar. What it comes down to is every little bit of weight that you give up making a lightweight concrete, you give up strength. That's the big thing. You're very limited in the scope of projects that you can use a lightweight concrete for, whether a perlite concrete or a vermiculite concrete, simply because they're just not all that strong. Something like this here is probably about an inch and a quarter or so in thickness. I mean, it's pretty strong in my hands here, but I'm pretty sure I could karate chop this thing in half, and that's not a good sign if you're looking for some sort of usefully strong concrete. And that's kind of the limitation. One notable difference that I'll say about vermiculite concrete versus perlite concrete is they, these minerals re react differently when exposed to water. Like vermiculite is notorious for being absorbent. So when you pour water on it, it just drinks it all up. Perlite kind of reacts more like a polystyrene. It floats and bobs around and it kind of repels the water a little bit. Like, I mean, it does absorb it, but not in the same way that vermiculite does. So that is one of the main differences between vermiculite concrete and perlite concrete, is that vermiculite reacts like a sponge when in contact with water. And what that allows for is a better consolidation of your concrete product. The, it, it almost feels like you're troweling a sponge when you're troweling a, a vermiculite-based concrete, whereas a perlite-based concrete is not the same. It feels very stiff and hard and scratchy when you're troweling it. So that give to the vermiculite product allows for a tighter consolidation. You can see in this brick here, just as I turn it over in my hand, this brick is a lot more consolidated than this perlite brick here. And that's simply because of the way that vermiculite reacts with water. So that's one of the big differences between a vermiculite concrete and a perlite concrete, though they're both still lightweight concrete. So is one better than the other? Well, I mean, they're basically the same price. They're usually available for sale at the same kind of stores. Uh, they produce similar products in terms of appearance and physical texture and I don't really think that there's a big difference between them, though I personally find that working with vermiculite to be a little bit easier because I find that it's a, it's a better product on the trowel as opposed to the perlite concrete, which I find to be a little bit harder to get a decent finish and it's a little bit harder to consolidate the concrete in a satisfactory way. The main difference between something like a vermiculite concrete and a perlite concrete is that the vermiculite concrete consolidates a little bit easier, a little bit better, and it trowels a little bit easier. I also just like having bags of vermiculite on hand versus bags of perlite because the vermiculite I can also use for absorbing spills. You know, if I'm working in the, the shop and I have a spill, vermiculite is the perfect thing to use for that. So having some around is useful. In total, there's not many things you can make with vermiculite concrete or perlite concrete. Most of them come down to ornamental applications. But that's okay because, as you can see, I think ornamental concrete applications are pretty cool. I hope you think so too. I know she's riveted.